Hello everyone, my name is PJ and welcome back to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy 4 Part 19. Okay, so we're not going to be able to finish this Let's Play in 20 parts. That's assured now. The final dungeon of this is its own fucking game. And we're stuck on the first boss. Okay. So, last episode, my mic was really quiet for some reason. Don't know why, I moved it closer to my mouth, hopefully that'll fix it. But, I got back here, I got the Sage's Staff again, and I relearned Vidya's Tornado, so that's all taken care of. Now we're just going to try and fight the White Dragon again, and hopefully do better this time, because we know now not to use any fucking elements, or it just counters with the most powerful version of that element. So, just physical attacks. That's all we're gonna use. Although it does seem to counter physical attacks with slow. That's annoying. As long as we don't use anything elemental, it won't use anything particularly powerful. And you know what? As long as we slow it, then us being slowed won't matter. It'll be like we're running at normal speed. No, no, no spells. Although I could use Sylph. That's not elemental. It would become wind elemental in the 3D remake, but... Hmm, does decent damage and these Oh shit, okay. So any spell that doesn't have an element gets countered with Quake. Just like I predicted. Okay, I missed if Slow actually worked on it. Um, let's just cast Kiracha on the party. I have no reason not to expend as many resources as possible. Okay, so what the hell is Vidya going to do? She can't cast anything. Or she can cast Ashura, actually. Yeah, she could do that. Because it doesn't target the enemy. Yeah, but this isn't so bad. What's Ashura gonna do? Kyuaga? Okay. Then I'll cast Protect on the party. Minus Kane, because, you know, he likes to abandon us when I tell him to. But this isn't so bad. But that's basically how all the bosses are in this place. You just gotta learn the trick. Yeah, he should be dead in a matter of minutes. Or seconds, even. I can just keep casting Ashura. Let me see what Ashura does before I decide what Rosa does. Protect! Uh, well, I already had Protect. So, I guess... I don't know. If I just cast haste on somebody, would it make them act faster? Like, would it override slow and give them haste instead? Or would it just remove slow? Would it even work at all? Hmm. Oh, I won. Yeah, see, that wasn't so bad. And we get the Murasame. Okay, I'm giving that straight to edge. Straight edge. Get it? Never mind. 140... 147. Did that? Oh, that raises his defense, too. Cool. Well, uh, in that case, the easiest way to get out of here is to just cast Exit, because it does work, thank god. Although, I think there's a point in this dungeon where it doesn't work. Like, you have to go back so far before you can use Exit. And then I'll just go right back in. The rest of this Let's Play is going to be the final dungeon. Because it's the only thing left. I mean, if we happen to get a pink tail, highly unlikely, then we'll go back and get the adamant armor. But, you know, I should go save. If I can spend 10 hours trying to get a summon drop and fail, there's no way I'll get a pink tail without even trying. You guys sit through this every time you go to the final dungeon. 
Okay, and we're back. So we went left of that secret passage the first time, so let's go through this one next. This should just take us all the way around to another treasure chest, which will most likely be guarded. This is like the easiest battle in this whole dungeon. A single dark sage? Not even a problem. Red Giants, also easy. Why does everyone take so little damage from Emission except Edge? I mean, Edge doesn't take much damage either, but still. Hmm. And then takes care of him. Kane will probably be the first character to reach level 60, but I want all of them to be at least 60 before I fight the final boss. Of course it's guarded, of course. By two red giants, not even a problem. And hell, I wonder if Odin would work on them. Nah, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm just gonna summon Bahamut. Mega Flare. That's so fucking awesome. Wait, you can self destruct? Really? Since when? Oh god, do they counter Mega Flare with self-destruct? That's bullshit. Alright, Black Garb, which I think is for Edge, but first I have to resurrect him. Let's see. Black Belt to Black Garb. 45, 12. 56, 24. That doubles his magic defense. Lowers his attack slightly due to the lack of the Black Belt. But that's fine, he needed more defense anyway. And the last fight was proof of that. Okay, and now that we got that, there's no reason for us to just cast Exit and leave. But what's the point in walking all the way back to the entrance when we can just teleport back to it safely? Don't just give me a minute to heal up and save again. This is, this is what the final dungeon's gonna be like. It's gonna be a lot of caution. A lot of meticulous... Is there, a, is there a noun version of meticulous? Meticulation? And right back in. There are quite a few save points in the final dungeon. I think there's at least two. But once we find one, then we won't have to cast exit anymore. We'll just use that. Because once we get really, really deep, casting exit will just cause us to have to backtrack a lot. It'll be a nuisance. It's a cry and shame that Sussel doesn't learn any more white magic spells in this version. Okay, second floor. We can get this chest that we saw before. Flame Whip. Ooh. That's bound to be stronger than the Blitz Whip, so I can sell that next chance I get. I really only use whips for grinding, though, since arrows are better anyway. Unless... Unless the Flame Whip does happen to be stronger than the Uichi Bow, which I doubt. Let's see, 79, 69. Hmm, nah. There's another chest over there. Okay, so I learned my lesson about Red Giants. Don't cast Bahamut unless you're sure it will kill them. I can cast regular spells, though. I don't see a problem with that. I did go to the Humming Ways and buy more items, by the way. Like X Potions and stuff. I even bought a few, um, a few whistles, just in case I needed them. Okay, let's see what's new. Dragon Shield. Ooh boy, that's probably for Kane, but is it better than the Aegis Shield? Oh, it's slightly stronger, has less magic defense though. It's a two for two trade-off. But does the Dragon Shield have any special abilities? Oh! Hmm, very interesting. Okay. So, Cecil can use it too, obviously, but it makes you resistant to fire, ice, lightning, and attack some dragons. That's really, really good, actually. Um, I think I might want to just give that to Cecil. Well, no, um, hmm. Because all the Aegis Shield does is makes you resistant to petrification. That doesn't come up very often, but it also lowers magic defense. Uh, hmm. Um. Hmm. This is a tough choice. 
you know what? He's the Dragoon. I'm just going to give it to uh, Kane. I mean, because he hardly ever gets healed since he's in the air so much. So this will help lessen the overall damage he takes. Okay, next. Third floor. Okay, which way to go? Follow Cecil's left hand. That's a dead end. That's a dead end. That looks like the right way to go down below, so I'm just going to go left first. Gold Dragon. Well, these things love to paralyze, huh? Hmm, they seem to counter being attacked with it. God damn. Okay, well... You don't have the flow animation on, so I can only assume you're not immune to Quake. Well, we'll see. Thunderbolt? Okay, this game loves to use the D&D &D colors of dragons, but... It does not use the correct elements. Because in D&D, &D, gold dragon's a fire elemental. Now, is Entangle missing? Or are they just targeting Edge repeatedly? And failing? Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be working for them. It only worked once. Is it everyone else's equipment, maybe? I don't know. Okay, that's a dead end. This we saw earlier, and it's just a... I don't know, I think it's just there to let you get a good look down there where we just got the Murasame. I'm gonna ignore those stairs for now and go over here. Bone Dragon. I already fought some of you guys. You're not a problem. Do I even get another Shock Rom for Edge? I haven't found one yet. The Boomerang counts, I guess? The Boomerang is way too weak for this point in the game. Okay, this is most likely guarded. Or not. Okay, it's just gonna give me the whole Dragon set, isn't it? Okay, Dragon Helm. 77-21, 78-22. Very, very minor increases. Due to all of these fights taking just as long as bosses, I've been recording for about an hour and a half per session now. So if it gets cut down to like 40 minutes, then that's just how much I had to cut out. Ready, I leveled and learned Death. Another spell that she would likely never use, because what the hell is it going to work on? I don't know, maybe we'll actually work on something. Next time I run into a dragon that isn't a bone dragon, I guess I'll try it out. It'll likely fail, though. Just saying. Okay, down through here. Dragon armor. Let's see, 78, 22. 80, 23. Minor increases, but necessary ones. And dragon gloves. 80, 23. 81, 24. So... Kane now has the full dragon set. Okay, I'm not gonna bother trying to cast death on giants because I'm pretty sure they're robots and you can't kill a robot. You can only destroy it. So it seems to me like they'd be creatures immune to death. Kind of like undead. I wonder though, are golems immune to death? Like stone golems? Have we even run into any of those in this game? I can't remember now. Okay. It takes me a while to learn enemies' patterns. Because it's not obvious whether or not they're countering or just get multi-attack or really fast because of the ATB system, but it looks like Red Giants counter spells with Beam. Which always does exactly 10% of your max health and damage. So, I can't cast Quake on these guys anymore. It's not worth it. You just gotta be patient with them. Okay. Next floor. Fourth floor. Uh... Your left is a dead end. Um... We'll go this way before going down the stairs. Artemis arrows. Yep. Those are the strongest arrows in the entire game. I forget that they have a special effect too, they probably do, but the only way to get more of those is to hope that you get them from a drop. Ooh, here we go. 
this would be a good opportunity, assuming this thing doesn't die right away, to cast the death spell. Okay. Death costs 35 MP. I better have a high chance of success. Here we go. Nothing. See? Told you. No point in even casting. It's a waste of MP. I don't know, maybe there's a really powerful enemy somewhere down here that's really susceptible to death, but I'm not going to be trial and erroring each one to figure out which one it is. Stardust! Yay, more items that cast Comet. Uh, hmm. Not sure which way to go. Man, those gold dragons are annoying. They counter everything with Entangle, and it works more often than I'd like. Unlike that first battle I had with them. Okay, well, the stairs over there. Mm, so I'm gonna try going left first. Yeah, it's just a cave here. With a chest. With an elixir. I could always use more elixirs, I guess. Except I'll probably never use an elixir if we're being honest. Okay. Those are leveled. Now what's in here? There's a chest up here. A white fang, really? Dino zombie. Now, this wooden hat. Oh, it's definitely weak to holy, that much is apparent. Oh, curse. I was going to ask if it was weak to fire. I mean, it's red, and red usually indicates fire elemental. But in the case of this game, it also indicates weakness to fire, like with the flans. Uh, I think we're good on these things as long as I have a holy elemental weapon. Jeez, its attacks do a lot of different status effects. Curse, paralyze, jeez. Okay. <sighs> sure would be nice if I found a save point soon. X potion, okay. So far I've only found one crappy item, and that's that white fang. Monsters. Oh, it's a behemoth. And this is a non-boss behemoth, even though it was a fixed encounter. Well, anyway, Dreamless Void helped me out in regarding fighting these things. These guys are actually really, really slow. All they do is counter everything you do. So, I should only hit them with my strongest attacks, and I can take my time. I don't have to worry about anyone dying, really. Bio doesn't seem to work very well on them. I would love to poison it. Maybe I can poison it. Actually. No, it doesn't work. Okay. Well, let's just... parry with everybody and have Kane jump. And Rosa pray. Keep ourselves healed. Cain will kill it for us, it will hardly ever attack on its own. It'll take longer, but we'll use a lot less resources this way. Oh, that's weird. He didn't counterattack that time. Jeez, that was the first unprovoked attack he's made this whole battle! Is he really that slow? I was starting to think he never attacked in the zone. God. Okay, so those things aren't half as bad as I thought. They just take a really, really long time to kill if you want to be safe about it. Stardust Rod. Wait a minute. We've been getting items called Stardust that let us cast Comet. This isn't gonna... It wouldn't. L let me look it up. It does. It casts Comet when used as an item. Comet's basically just a weaker meteor. 
I forget if it's single target or not. It wouldn't become a normal spell until Final Fantasy VII, but yeah. And it also greatly boosts your intelligence. It's the strongest rod in the game. Wondering if I should just give that to Rydia. No, I don't have to give it to her. I just have to have her... Well, no, holding it is the only way to get the intelligence boost. Her arrows aren't actually doing all that much anyway. I'm not attacking with her. So, why not? Let's give that to Rydia. Hmm, okay. My inventory is full. I am going to have to use the whistle. Okay, let's see. Let's give you... The Blitz Whip. Kiku Ichimonji, Aegis Shield, and the Genji set. This piece of shit. And my regular tents, because I have 27 cottages. That should be good. Stardust Rod. But what is her intelligence? Well, I'm assuming that's wisdom in this hack, this translation. So it's 78, which I think is almost as high as it can possibly go. I think the max is 99. Might as well take it for a test run. The item, Stardust Rod. Does it have a long charge time? Nope, goes like right away. One damage? What? Okay, is it elemental? Because I know this guy isn't resistant to magic. Byraga works on him all the time. Let me look up exactly what Comet does and how it works. Wow, that is hilarious. Okay, so, the Stardust Rod works just fine. Comet is non-elemental, it's just that the Bone Dragon is slightly bugged, and its elemental affinities are kind of wonky in the original. So, that was a poor enemy to test it out on. Talk about confusing. Fifth Floor. Now, how do I get over to you? See you? How do I reach you? How do I reach these kids? Monsters! Red dragon and blue- Oh no, I can't handle two new dragons at the same time? What are you talking about? What are you doing to me, game? Fine, let's just take out one at a time. Just relax. Let me get a Cura on edge. And summon the master. Well, they don't seem to do a ton of damage. Except that one has multi attack. Holy shit. Come on, Rydia, hurry up. Mega Flare. I swear to god, if these things counter with something. Okay, they don't. Man, they have a lot of health. I'm pretty sure that these things are going to become random encounter enemies very soon. Kiraja on the party. Hey, why don't you try using the Stardust Rod again? As I've heard people say that it typically does around 7,000 damage for them each time they use it. That did nothing. What the hell? Well, that was the first spell I cast on them. Maybe they're just highly resistant to magic. There, one's dead. on edge. This edge is always needing healed. You really, really could use that other chakra. If there even is one. I still haven't looked that up. If the death spell does work on things, I think it's best... Uh, really? I think it's best saved for enemies that you really, really do not want to fight and are willing to waste MP spamming it. I just got 105,000 gil from those things. 
15,500 experience. Edge leveled. Crystal shield. More shields. Okay. How much stronger than the Aegis shield is the crystal shield? 70-23, 73-22. Lowers magic defense. Let me see how the crystal shield is, effect-wise. It's stupid. Only Cecil can equip it. It raises his spirit by like three points, so now he can heal better, like he was healing to begin with. And it makes him resistant to undead attacks. Aegis Shield is better. Yeah, so next time I get the chance, I'll give the Crystal Shield to the Fat Chocobo. Ariman. Oh, I thought you were the boss. Because we will be fighting um, something very similar to this soon. With the same ability. Condemn? I think that's the first instance of Death Sentence in the series. There's nothing you can do to remove that. Wait, did that just... You recast it on her! Thank you, thank you for resetting it, you stupid asshole. But yeah, but once that counter reaches zero, she dies instantly. Automatically. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. And there'll be a boss that does the same thing. But I know how to fight it. I don't know if it's the perfect strategy, but... It works for me. They're basically guaranteed to die. Nothing you can do about it. And Rydia dies. No? Not yet? Oh, um, hmm. I guess I killed it just before the effect happened? Hmm. Six, 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 six experience, really. Well, I guess I got really lucky there, but. The boss version of that enemy is going to be uh, a bit more complicated. Am I ever going to find a save point? Protect ring. Uh, does that do what it did in Final Fantasy 1? Does it protect me from instant death? No, it protects me against fire, ice, and lightning. And everyone can equip it. Except for Dark Knight Cecil for some reason. You don't even have him by the time you get this thing. And it boosts stamina, so that's cool. I forget exactly how stamina works in this game. I don't know if it's just a stat that determines how your HP grows, like it was in FF2, or if it's just like a natural defense stat. I'm not sure, but resistant to fire, ice, and lightning, I am going to give that to Edge. He needs all the defense he can get. Yeah. Okay, do I want to go up or down? Let's try down first. Treasure chest. Monsters, of course. It's just a behemoth, though. I am not worried about behemoths. I wonder, does he counter steel? Well, he doesn't counter it, but I didn't steal anything. But I'm going to keep trying. I want to know what he's got. A headband? What? Like a regular old young when we first got him headband? What's even the point? But he has more to steal. If he didn't have anything to steal, it would say nothing to steal. Another headband. I don't need all these fucking headbands. All I stole from him were two headbands. Well, I'm never gonna try that again. Crystal armor. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to give that to Cecil. Because if the crystal shield was Cecil only, the entire crystal set's probably just for him. So let's see, 70-23, 74-26. Well, those are actually some big boosts compared to what Keen's armor was giving him. 
Well, Ange ended up dying as a result of Condemn. Mm, I think that one gave different experience that time. That's weird. Why would the same enemy give different experience? It's because a character died? Huh. You know, game, I would really, really love a save point. Okay, here's some good advice for fighting the Ariman. As much of a good idea as it seems, do not cast haste on anyone. Not a good plan. <laughs> Save point? Anywhere? Please? And if you need Rosa to do something, other than heal, other than resurrect anyone that happens to die, uh, try casting slow on it. And don't forget about the Stardust Rod, because I keep forgetting about it. Why does it do so little damage to everything? It's not at all like people told me. Stardust Rod sucks. There's so little damage to everything. Well, the Aoyaman just drops elixirs. Huh. I guess it makes it worth fighting them. Yeah, I don't know what the deal with the Stardust Rod is, but I'm giving her back her original weapon. I don't know why it does so little damage to everything. Another chest with monsters in it. Two red dragons. Oh, it's not two different colored dragons, so if I find an effective strategy, I can use them on both of them. Let me slow the other one, the one we're not trying to kill. And bio this one. Yeah, that'll keep the bottom one slightly less active while we work on killing the top one. Now I can... Are you doing something? Ah, oh, that's weird. You can interrupt the multi-attack? Well, anyway. Let's get the other one slowed, too. And get this one bioed. So it can start dying while we're working on this top one. Okay, one down. These things don't do much damage. They just have a lot of health. I've already cast Bio on each of them, and they've never countered with anything, so... I don't know. Uh, I'm really running low on MP for Rydia. So I'm just gonna have her attack. Rose is getting low on MP, too. Could really use the save point game. <sighs> Ursa leveled and learned holy. There we go. Is it the last spell she'll learn? Crystal gloves. Let me take a look. Yeah, Rosa has every white magic spell in the game. She's got them all. Holy costs 46. Huh, at least she finally has some decent offense. Should she ever, should the need ever arise. Okay, let's get those crystal gloves on... Cecil here. It means the only thing he's missing is the Crystal Helm. Are we at a save point yet? I feel like I'm wandering the desert trying to find water. Except the water is a save point and the desert is hell. Moon hell. I swear... More and more of these attacks seem to do, like, percentage-based damage. Like, Thunderbolt seems to do 10% of my max health. So weird. Is it just to keep it an effective attack no matter how powerful you get? Ah, uh, Sasso and Cain both leveled. That's, that's great. Cain's level 57. It's super. Okay, I think it's time... I think it's time to stop holding out for a save point, because who knows when the hell I'm going to find it. Let's just start using ethers. I'll use high potions, too. There. Now let's see what's in this chest. White robe. That has to be for Rosa. God, when's the last time I bought new armor for you? Oh, I think it was in the Fame March, actually. Just, I don't change your equipment very often. It's 4127. 4728. Now, I bet that boosted your will, too. Oh, yeah, look at that. 
Another chest up here. God, save points down here are harder to find than a reason to buy early access games. <laughs> Stupid fucker recast condemn on Cecil right as he was about to die. Chests. Oh, this isn't so bad. What the hell is this? This is pitiful. The Dark Sage is like the weakest enemy in this whole dungeon, and the Dino Zombie is weak to almost all of my attacks. Especially Cecil's. <laughs> Easy. Edge leveled, and what do I get? The Crystal Helm, of course. It's all very planned and systematic, isn't it? Okay. Is this... No. Of course not. Red Fang. Why does it think these fangs are even remotely useful? And what is that? That looks really suspicious. I don't see a secret passage, but still. Yeah, I see the blue dragons are a normal encounter now. Okay, if Blizzard doesn't hit all of my characters, then it doesn't, it's not that bad. What happens if I target you with Fairaga, though? Are you gonna go nuts? You gonna flop around like a lizard? Floppy lizard? I found this adorable picture of a... No, you absorb fire. Yeah, the ice elemental dragon absorbs fire. That makes perfect sense. Like I was saying, I found this adorable picture of a bat. This is really big bat. It's about the size of a puppy. And it looks like one, too. It looks like a puppy with wings. So adorable. I might as well just never cast any elemental spell again and just stick with, like, Quake and Bio and stuff. <sighs> Those things take forever to kill. Now what is this? Is this all just a big trap? Is it like the stairwell of high encounter rate blue dragons? You know, I just fought one of these fuckers. I really don't feel like it. Let's... I don't know, let's just go ahead and spam death. See if it ever works. I mean, all video was doing before was shooting arrows anyway. But give her something to do. I feel like I'm playing Final Fantasy XIII. Trying to get death to trigger. Nah. I've guessed it three or four times now. It's just not going to work. It must just be straight up immune. I'm never casting that spell again. Nothing. There's nothing here. <sighs> Two more treasure chests. Uh, well, let me heal up, and I'll see what I can do about them. I'm just hoping I don't run into anything so unbelievably, ridiculously powerful and had to do all of this over again. Two blue dragon. You know what? Smoke. Get me out of here, Edge. I'll deal with you if you're in a chest. But I'm so sick of fighting you. It's hard enough fighting one. Fuma Shuriken? These guys I'll fight. I'm getting close to my hour and a half recording time. I'm just gonna have to keep going until I find a save point. Is there only one save point in this whole place? Artemis arrows. Smoke. Smoke. Are you smoking yet? What's in here? Another chest, and looks like continuation. Uh, let's go back the other way. 
Rydia leveled. Rydia still has two spells to learn. Flare and Meteor. Oh, I don't go any further left. Okay, then I just had to grab that. Okay, just gonna come right back over to here. And you notice there are a lot of teleporters around? I can fight one of these. There are a lot of teleporters around. Um, basically, I think they all are just daisy chained together and they lead back up to that one weapon we saw. Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's how it all works. Unless there was a secret, secret passage that I didn't see up above. Those are leveled. Is anyone level 60 yet? No, not even close. Okay, let's check out this chest, which of course is guarded. <laughs> not even a threat. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Minerva? Um, I'm full. Hmm. Is that the Minerva... Okay, how, how do you pronounce it? Is it Bustier? Buster? Bustier? Bustier? I don't know. But that's what it is. Um, let's replace the Red Fang. Seems like, seems like I'm always replacing fangs when my inventory is full. But, hmm. I need to look up to see what that does, and see who it's better for, because it's a female-only item, I know that much. Hmm. Plus 15, Strength, Stamina, and Agility. Minus 15, Intelligence and Spirit. So... It's a piece of gear, for female characters only, that raises their physical stats, and... worsens their magical stats in a game where the only three female characters are casters. Yeah, I'm never equipping that. Uh, looks like I had to summon the fat chocobo again. Hmm. <laughs> okay, moving on once more. It's never gonna give me a fucking save point, is it? Wait, I remember this hallway. This row of doors. One of these rooms is a save point, I know it. It might be the only save point in this hope. Yes, here it is. I finally found it. At one hour and 31 minutes in. <laughs> I finally found it. <laughs> and I managed to get absolutely everything before this point, so I don't even have to go backwards from here. <sighs> Welcome to your new home, by the way. Yes, well, so far, we've still only fought one of the dungeon's bosses. I know there's more. There's that one weapon that we saw that has a boss, and there's at least one other one. Not totally sure where they all are, but we'll just have to hunt for them, because I don't even think we're half done with this dungeon. Or maybe we're exactly half done. I don't know, but the worst is yet to come. So, thank you all so very much for watching. If you liked this episode, leave a like and a comment. I'm still just starting out and likes and comments both mean a lot to me. If you want to be notified when I upload more videos, subscribe and you will. And if you want to support me on Patreon, there'll be an end card at the end of the video and a link in the description below, alongside a link to my new Twitter and Tumblr accounts. So, I'll see you all in the next video. The first walkthrough that I found for this game was on the Final Fantasy Wiki, written by Henry Akers, or however you pronounce your name, and it was the most useless shit ever because it just tells you to skip all the treasure on this floor. Fuck you, Henry. Seriously. Call that a walkthrough?